Today on the show... You pick this year's best TV. Katie Sackhoff gets fired up. Wildly inappropriate. And Tim and I channel our inner Jedi. Not, don't start yet. This is the IMDb Show. Hey everyone, I'm Tim Cash. And I'm Carrie Doherty, and it is Friday, December 15th. And here is your IMD Brief. Every year, IMDb puts together a list of the TV shows that were most consistently popular with IMDb users, and this year is no different. You can check out the full list at the link below, but first, let's take a deeper dive into a few of our favorites. In at number five is Stranger Things, whose highly anticipated second season gave us Goth 11, Bitchin' a Gremlins-esque storyline. What are you, little guy? And the addition of a real-life child adventurer from the 80s, Sean Azton. I love him. Down here, it's our time. It's our time down here. Every episode this season ranked eight stars or higher, with the exception of The Lost Sister, which was a standalone episode and proof that Stranger fans do not like taking a break from the show's main story. We on the same side. What the fans did love, however, was the epic season finale, which was the highest rated episode of the season and, so far, the series. And in at number four is Rick and Morty, the only animated show and the only comedy on our top 10 list. This year, we were gifted with the Rick Lantis mix-up, which is currently the highest rated episode of the entire series. I am just so glad they brought Evil Morty back. This seems like a good time for a drink and a cold, calculated speech with sinister overtones. In at number three is The Walking Dead, whose IMDb ratings have been on a general decline since season six, but fans keep watching and rating, so clearly we are in it for the long haul. And okay, I'm about to drop a huge spoiler about the mid-season finale, so if you haven't seen it yet, you might want to skip ahead a minute. <laughs> Carl got bit and we're not gonna deal with it until the show comes back in February? That is cold, AMC. And in at number two is 13 Reasons Why. This high school drama mystery show was a little polarizing with its depiction of suicide. She's a crazy drama queen who just killed herself for attention. But nonetheless resonated with a big enough audience to grab our number two spot. And now let's jump to the number one show. That's right, I'm talking about Game of Thrones, which has such a hardcore fan base that it has reigned supreme for the past six years. This year, the highest rated episode of Game of Thrones was The Spoils of War, also known as, oh yeah, dragons can really mess you up. Okay, there's so much more to get into about Game of Thrones though, so to read more about it and the rest of the shows on our top 10 list, head over to the link below. My guest today goes by many names and they're weird. From Aminat Black, Bo-Katan Cries, and Captain Starbuck, please welcome to the IMDb show, Katie Sackhoff. Out, out of what? Out of options, out of your mind out of the closet. There's just so many outs for the lady in blue. Katie, how are you? I'm good, thank you for having me. Have you always been a sci-fi fan? I have. My dad and I sort of had this father-daughter thing growing up where he would show me movies that you should never show a seven-year-old, but it was right. like this secret we had and they were always sci-fi action movies. Like I think I saw Predator when I was like nine. <laughs> And he was like, don't tell your mother. <laughs> like, sure. That's a so good I, dad. <laughs> it's an amazing dad. But I've always had this understanding of that it wasn't real. Because my father would explain things to me as we went along so I wouldn't get scared. And I think it's sort of what, you know, made me want to be an actor. Well, something that's very real is that you are very much part of the Star Wars universe. I am. Where are the survivors of this battle? The wounded. The victors. When they offered it to me and everyone was like, did you have to think about it? And I'm like, are you insane? I would have played like a rock just to be in this world. Rebels fans are diehard. Recently, we've been seeing little Easter eggs towards the original trilogy. Anything mm. you can confirm for us? There's like nothing I can tell you without <laughs> completely obliterating you just my got very NDA nervous. with Lucas. <laughs> you did you see very, it? You went, my face turned really red. I sat up a little bit straighter and I was like, I can't. You're part of two very big sci-fi worlds. Yeah. Are there any parallels between Star Wars and Battlestar Galactica? Absolutely, but I think that it's accidentally intentional. Like, wasn't Starbuck Han Solo? Let's get one thing straight. I take orders from just one person, me. Well, Captain Adama, I am the flight instructor, sir. My word is scripture, sir. That's the great thing about Battlestar Galactica. 
you could convince someone who doesn't like sci-fi, let's watch this show mm. because there's more to it. I think that's why it's so relevant even now because it's talking about current issues and, and the issues never change. They've just got different faces. Were you aware as actors that you were tackling these kind of deeper social issues. Of course, right? You guys are doing that like daily. <laughs> I, I was 22. I right. was concerned with who my date was like Saturday <laughs> really? night with. Yeah, I didn't have any idea. I mean, I was a kid, you know? I mean, I remember Eddie almost like sitting everyone down and sort of like giving us this big speech about how we're creating something amazing. And I just remember thinking to myself, I just wanted to shoot a gun. Like <laughs> up till that point, I'd played such stereotypical blonde characters that like I was the blonde girl in the Halloween movie that you wish was gonna die soon. <laughs> And when Starbuck came along, I was like, oh, this will change my career. And it did. Mm -hmm. It didn't take long for you to get back into sci-fi. Yeah. Flash. Yeah. What's it like to join that epic universe and play a bad girl like Amulet Black? You know, the thing with villains is you have to want them to win. They have to be enjoyable to watch. And so I made her as big as possible. You and I could have been gods. Let's talk about getting into that British accent. It's a little Kate I was Moss. Gonna it's Kate Moss, a little bit of Kate Blanchett. Yep. She's all over the place. The only thing I need to be concerned with is is she fun to watch? That's all I wanted. Now it's time for the IMDb speed round. Whew. I'm gonna give you a famous phrase from movies and TVs and you're gonna fill in the blank, giving us like a insight into your brain. Oh, you don't wanna be in there. Well, let's see. <laughs> you will be the judge of that. It's bad. The first rule of Fight Club is... To beat the <laughs> out of the other person. <laughs> There's no crying in... Oh, life. Depressing. <laughs> Show me the... Wildly inappropriate. My head just went crazy, really inappropriate things. Like... Show me the... <laughs> I can't. We're moving on. <laughs> As God is my witness, I'll never... Jump out of an airplane. Amazing. Katie, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a minute. And when we come back, we're going to have some questions from your fans. <laughs> Anyone who's ever seen a Star Wars movie dreams of picking up a real lightsaber and clashing with the dark side. So with The Last Jedi in theaters, Tim and I checked that box off our bucket lists and headed to Swordplay LA. Hey, Carrie, how hey, you doing? Hey, Tim, good, how are you? Nice Tim, what's up? Good. Hey, Tim. How long have you been teaching Swordplay <sighs> to Hollywood? It's probably been about 30 years now. Tell us some of the movies that you've worked on. Uh, Master and Commander, <laughs> Robin Hood Men in Tights. Prepare for the fight scene. Parks and Rec. Dollhouse. You've obviously watched the Star Wars movies progress. Have you seen a huge change in style throughout the movies? Oh yeah, definitely. In what way? The first person that did the Star Wars movie was a man named Bob Anderson. He was a fencing instructor who became a sword master, and so a lot of what he loved was that style of movement. And through that, it's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. I could show you the ways of the Force! Sword fighting that you've learned, how do you apply it to lightsabers? Everything you do is movement, and then the sword is like a secondary kind of thing. I would like this team to make an attack to the head, and I would like this team to step out and parry like that. One. Good, our second move, we go for the leg on the right side. This is gonna move. Very good, you guys. And then cut at his leg. Then cut at his face right there. Boom! You'll find I'm full of surprises. <laughs> You guys ready to try it? Sure. Yeah. Just focus your energy instead of your brain. So Katie, we asked some fans on Twitter, give us their questions for you. Are you ready? <sighs> yes. At Clara Oswald asked, what's it like coming into an established franchise show like The Flash with its own fan base already, as opposed to Battlestar where you were there from day one? You just sort of want to go in, leave your mark and then leave. Like, I don't want to stay too long. It's like a party. Yeah. You were invited, <laughs> but you don't really know the host. Next question, at Jennifer7408. If there was one person you could choose to do a show, movie or another project with, who would that person be? Um, Kenneth Branagh. 
big fan of his work. I just recently watched Murder on the Orient Express. Okay. And I was thoroughly impressed by the character work. It's true. No detail escapes his notice. So, Katie, at the end of every episode, we do our weekend watch list. We talk about what we're watching this weekend. Tim, well, what will you be watching? Star Wars, of course. Of course. Cool. We're all going to go see Star Wars. Yeah, yeah we're <laughs> all going to see Star <laughs> Wars. It's true. Let the past die. Um, I am still trying to make it through my entire viewing session of Rain. He will die. And I will enjoy watching him die. So easy to follow, mm -hmm. so interesting, just like a soap opera. I'm obsessed. Carrie, you? Too Funny to Fail, The Life and Death of the Dana Carvey Show. When I left SNL, I kind of decided that it'd be fun to do sketch comedy again. It's oh, a wow. Hulu documentary. It is so amazing to see the process of what the Dana Carvey show went through. It only lasted eight episodes. They have some amazing interviews with Stephen Colbert, Steve Carell. It's really funny. It's absolutely true. And if you want to watch any of the shows or movies that we've talked about on today's episode, you can just add them to your IMDb watch list. If you don't have one, don't worry about it. It's super easy to make. Look up a movie you're interested in, click the plus sign, and boom, it's added. Then the next time you don't know what to watch, open your watch list. Thank you so much for joining us here on the show. It's been a real pleasure having you. Katie, thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs> now, with so many trailers coming out each week, we want to help you stay on top of it all. So here are our favorite moments from this week's newest trailers. This is going to be awesome. You blow this chance. I'm gonna kick your ass. Come on. I think you are someone very special. Oh. Well, thank you. 